that good things are coming. And the reason I know that good things are coming is because the word says that our Father in heaven above, the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning, He gives us every good and every perfect gift. Uh, saints, He starts with a seed. The Bible is very clear. It says there's neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female. For we are all one in Christ Jesus. And if we are Christ, we are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Look at there. You got to have a seed, saints, before you can have the promise. So, Father God, we just praise you and thank you today and lift up the name of Yeshua Hamashiach, who is Jesus the Messiah. We thank you that you are the seed that God planted and the harvest is certainly plenty because of your sacrifice, uh, Lord Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I plead and apply the blood of Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus the Messiah, over you, all of my friends and family, brothers and sisters. Uh, remember, good things are coming. And um, I hope that you're going to be a part of that laboring, harvesting force that the Lord is lifting up and training up and equipping even today. But saints, our text today comes from John chapter 12, verses 23 and 24. And Jesus answered them saying, the hour is come that the son of man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Now, saints, first and foremost, Jesus is telling them that the hour was come, that he should suffer, that he should glorify the Father through his death, burial, and resurrection. That the, the middle wall of partition would be broken down between the Jews and the Gentiles so that they could be united in one body. But death had to occur. There had to be a perfect blood sacrifice. So we know the gospel, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and the fact that he walked on this earth seriously for 40 days and 40 nights after the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit raised him back to life he was a witness over 500 people seen him at one time so saints this is history you cannot change history it is his story and i'm going to proclaim it but saints it had to start with one little seed that's a tiny seed wow wow look at how little that apple seed is and one little apple has several seeds in it one lemon seed, which is completely different than the apple seed, produces fruit that produces many seeds. So saints, check it out. One lemon might have, I've counted 10 seeds in one lemon. Depending on the size of the apple, I count four to six seeds in the apple. So when this seed is planted, it dies and it resurrects seriously as fruit. And that fruit has many seeds in it. Oh, wow. That is so awesome. But there, you know, what I wanted to share with you today is basically simple enough. Jesus talked about death. He talked about control, and he talked about purpose in this context. Saints, this is cool. Jesus is talking about death, so why be afraid of it? He, caught, he conquered death. He's talking about control. Wow. Not the control that we think of that's evil and manipulative, but the control that God has, Yahuwah. He has control over everything and everyone. I love the fact that God is in control. And Jesus also talked about purpose in this context. Jesus taught about his own death, burial, and resurrection. He was the seed. He was the first of many brethren. 
the cool part is, saints, it doesn't matter if it's an apple seed or a lemon seed. It's going to produce after its own kind. It's going to reproduce after its own kind. And when you have a seed, you can actually get a lot of fruit and a lot more seeds to continue the process. So Jesus teaching us of his own death, burial, and resurrection. Then he seriously tells us that I'm going to glorify Father God, Yahuwah. He's going to get all the glory, all the honor. Because he himself, Yeshua Hamashiach, wholeheartedly trusted Yahuwah, God the Father, to his own death and beyond. Because he knew that Yahuwah, our Father in heaven, was in control. Jesus further went on to tell us that there was a purpose, a purpose in his death. It was in order that many seed, good seed, could be harvested later on. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, there's the death. It abides alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. So there's a purpose. In this, we know that God was in control. I'm going to go ahead and read verses 25 and 26 because it kind of goes along with it. He that loves his life shall lose it. And he that hates his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my Father, honor. Saints, if you're going to be a minister, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Saints, you got to die to self if you truly want to be the minister that God called you to be. I don't care if you're standing behind a pulpit or if you're standing in your house washing dishes and folding clothes and taking care of babies. That's ministry. Men and women. Taking care of family is ministry. You're a minister. Take up your cross and follow the Lord after you've denied yourself. What does that mean, saints? Think about it. You're going to die to self and you're going to give your life for another. Mothers do it every day. Fathers do it every day. That little seed that was planted has to die to self in order to become fruit that produces more seed so that perpetual life will always be here. I just want to break this down about Jesus talking about himself being that seed, that grain of wheat. Uh, think about that. His death literally mirrors a grain of some sort being put into the ground, decomposing. And his resurrection is, is like the... the fact that there's life and it springs up out of that dead grain and that little blade shoots up and, and it starts living and then seriously grows and the manifestation and the glorification of this abundance of fruit that many grains, oh my gosh, many grains will sustain life. He said, I must be glorified and fruitful so saints are you are you being glorified and fruitful for the Lord or are you serving yourself seed will produce after its own kind you cannot take an apple seed and ever think you're going to make lemonade you cannot take a lemon seed and think you're ever going to make apple pie Whatever 
seed you are, you're going to produce after that kind. So whether it's evil or good, you're going to reproduce after your own kind. There is uh, certainly no way that the glorious assembly of God, Yahuwah, could ever survive unless God himself was the author of it and the foundation. Jesus was glorified because he died to self. Seed, if it remains alone, can last a very long time. They've found seeds in Pharaoh's um, tombs 4,000 years old that can still reproduce. Think about that. One seed can reproduce and make many, many, many apples, lemons, believers. But there was an eightfold death and resurrection of Christ illustrated here, saints. Get this. First of all, necessity. He says, except. So there was a, a, a necessary... Um, there was an, a necessity here. It had to be done. Then there was a cause. Well, it had to fall into the ground. Unless it fell into the ground, nothing could happen. There's a, there's a cause here, and then there's going to be an effect after that cause. What about the place? It had to fall into the ground. Saints, it has to go into the tomb. It has to go into the, the, the place of death in order to come out of that tomb to life it's got to you've got to go into the tomb you've got to die in order to be resurrected you can't be resurrected if you're already thinking you're alive so you have to take into consideration number four the present state has to be death okay my my present state has to be my flesh being dead to sin in order that I might not be un, not be selfish anymore which brings us to number 5 unselfishness if I want to remain alone I'm being selfish because I'm not willing to die I'm willing to die now to self so that fruit can be repro reproduced and many more seeds will be harvested after my death burial and resurrection your death burial and resurrection which leads us to number six, resurrection. He says, bringeth forth, bringeth forth. Okay, so if you haven't had the necessity, the cause, the place, the present death, and the unselfishness, how can there be resurrection? Come on, saints. The gift of eternal life is free, but you have to obey afterwards. Come on. Oh, well, I'll just do nothing and I'm still going to make heaven. Well, how's that working for you? How's your life going? Saints. This is about seed reproducing after their own kind. It causes death in order that life may be brought forth. So what is the purpose? Number seven, the purpose, much fruit. Much fruit. Much fruit. Okay, I don't have to get you a basket full of fruit or a truckload of fruit for you to get this. The whole entire world was redeemed by Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Woohoo! Hallelujah! That's the truth. What's the mystery, saints? Number eight? Well, you know, there's many, many elements surrounding this mystery of, the, of death and resurrection of any seed. You know, if, if you put your trust and faith that if you put a dead grain into the ground and it's going to multiply and that we're going to be mer uh, uh, nourished by its multiplication... Uh, we can't really understand it. We have science. We can watch a plant do this and do that. But you really, at the end of the day, you cannot wrap your mind around the fact that that little seed brings forth life. God is the creator, and he's going to allow us to understand some things. But this one is just like, is so phenomenal. Guys, we can't tell how that one little grain becomes multiplied into many, even though we have the science. Try to figure it out. The earth, the air, the water, the sun have to cooperate to create new life. God is the creator of the earth, the air, the water, the sunshine, and everything. 
beyond it, and within it. We believe it, not because we understand it. We believe it because we see the results. Oh, <laughs> there's going to be a result of your death, burial, and resurrection. There's going to be a result. And if you haven't changed, then you're fooling yourself. You ain't fooling God, you're fooling yourself. There's going to be a change. You're not going to hang out where you used to. You're not going to go where you used to. You're not going to act, look, talk, think, dress, etc. Even spend your money and time the same. If you don't like that, then you don't like the Bible. You don't like the scriptures. You cannot explain and understand God. But you can do the best that you can according to your faith to share your testimony and share what God has done for you. And if you plant a seed and you help someone else to get some sort of understanding in the infinite purposes and works of the Lord God Almighty, Yahuwah himself, whereas he redeemed men through his son's death, burial, and resurrection, saints, you're on the right track. If you have Jesus and you truly have the Spirit of God living in you, you will share your faith. You will not have excuses. You will not sit on your thumbs and you will not sit in the pew when an altar call is made. Because if God lives in you, you want everybody to know what he's done for you. Not because you're trying to draw attention to yourself, but because the Word of God says, if you will allow that light to shine and you will do those good works, your light will shine and men will see that light and God will be glorified, not you. It's not about me, 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 I, 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 us four and no more. This is about people dying with seed in them and they're alone and they never reproduce anything good. Saints, every single human being has seed in them to produce fruit of one kind or another. I don't know if you're producing lemons or apples, but if you're a lemon... Then make some lemonade. Put some sugar in it and sweeten it up. If you're an apple, then make apple pie. Make cinnamon apples. Make something out of your life. I bless you. I love you. I pray that this word will be seed planted in fertile ground and produce much fruit. Good things are coming to God be the glory it's sister with a testimony I love you God bless you go produce some awesome amazing good tasting fruit I love you God bless you later